We can now turn any text into a vector of numbers. But that's only half the story. The real power comes from finding which vectors are similar, which pieces of content are related by meaning. This is how Netflix knows that if you liked The Matrix, you might enjoy Inception. Not because they have similar titles or share keywords, but because their meaning vectors are close together in that high dimensional space we talked about. In this lesson, we'll build this ourselves. Let's build a semantic movie search. In the API folder, create a new folder called semantic search with a route.ts file. We import embed and embed many from before, plus a new function called cosine similarity. This calculates how similar two vectors are. We will also import OpenAI from AI SDK slash OpenAI. Now let's create a movie database. In a real app, this would come from your actual database, but for learning, we will hard code some movies. I've picked a list of eight movies from different genres, sci-fi, romance, crime, and action. This will help us see how well semantic search works across different types of content. Now, the first step is to embed all these movie descriptions. In a production app, you would do this once when adding movies to your database and store the embeddings. But for this demo, we will embed them on each request. So export, async function, host, get hold of the request, and you extract the user's query from the request. So await request.json, and we destructure query. Next, we call embed many to embed our movie descriptions. So pass in an object. Model is going to be openai.text embedding model, text embedding three small, and we specify values, which is an array. We map over our movies array, extracting only the description. So for each movie, return movie.description. The embeddings come back in the same order as our movies. So we await the call to embed many, and we destructure from the result object, embeddings, and we will alias this to movie embeddings. We will return response.json, a message embeddings generated. Now that we have the embeddings for our movie descriptions, the next step is to embed the search query and using that embedding, find similar movies. To embed the query, we call the embed function. Model is going to be openai.text embedding model, text embedding three small. We also specify value, which is singular, and we assign the user's query. From the resulting object, we destructure embedding as query embedding. Now that we have the movies embeddings, as well as the query embedding, we can calculate similarity between query and each movie using the cosine similarity function. So const movies with scores, which is going to be an array of similarity scores. We map over the list of movies. We pass in a callback function. For each movie and index, we calculate the similarity. So const similarity is equal to cosine similarity. We pass in the query embedding and the movie embeddings of index. Once we have the similarity, we return an object where we destructure the movie and also include its similarity. Make sure to await embed to fix the error. Now, once we have movies with scores, let's return response.json results movies with scores. Let's save the file and test this out. In Thunder Client, update the URL to localhost 3000 slash API slash semantic hyphen search. The request body, we're going to specify query, a sci-fi movie about space. Send the request, and you can see our results array. We have each movie object, so ID1, title, the matrix, the description, and the similarity, 0.33. If you look at Inception, it's 0.18. The Notebook, 0.24. Interstellar, which is pretty close to our query, has 0.45, which should be the highest in our list of movies. 
Blade Runner comes in a close second. Our similarity calculation is working as expected. But returning all movies isn't very helpful. So let's sort them by similarity and return only the most relevant ones. Back in the route handler, we're going to sort movies with score. So call the sort method, pass in a callback function for a comma b, b dot similarity minus a dot similarity. And then we can return only the top results. So const top results is equal to movies with scores dot slice zero comma three. And for a response, we can now return the query as it is and results is going to be top results. Let's go back to Thunder Client and test this. Click send. And now look at the results. Interstellar has the highest similarity score, 0.45. Blade Runner is second, 0.41. And then the Terminator comes in third at 0.34. You can see that we never mentioned Interstellar in our search, but it still found the right movie. And the scores here are a reflection of our embeddings, which are only from simple one-liners right here. But Netflix would have a huge description of the movie as well as other metadata, which are embedded to make the score more relevant. But hopefully you get the idea. Now what you can also do is filter only the relevant results. So you can add a threshold filter. Before slicing, we can set const threshold is equal to 0 0.4. And then const relevant results is equal to movies with scores dot filter a movie such that movie dot similarity is greater than threshold. And we can now return relevant results dot slice 0, 0,3. When you click send, we can see we have one and just two movies recommended, Interstellar and Blade Runner. If you search cooking competition reality show, and press send, you will get zero results. And that is actually good. It's better to say no results found than show irrelevant content. In a real application, you would embed each movie description once when it's added to your database. You will store the embedding alongside the movie data. And when searching, only embed the query. You can compare the query embedding against your stored embeddings. The similarity calculation itself is fast. It's just math on arrays. But for millions of movies, even fast math adds up. That's where vector databases come in. They optimize the storage and search of embeddings using techniques like indexing to find similar vectors without checking every single one. We will learn about vector databases soon, but I hope you've understood the concept of semantic search.